I ranked every single Paradox Pokemon from worst to best. Before we jump into the list, I do want to tell you that all of the Paradox Pokemon are good. Almost all of them have a base stat total of 570, which is very good, and they all also have a good ability, either Protosynthesis or Quark Drive, which is very useful in general. So even the worst Paradox Pokemon on this list is still pretty good overall. That being said, the worst Paradox Pokemon is Sandy Shocks. This ancient form of Magneton is a ground and electric type Pokemon that leaves a little bit to be desired. It's fast, but not fast enough to really be that useful. It's strong, but not strong enough to do that much damage. And it's not frail, but it's also not really bulky enough to take big hits. Its typing isn't bad, though neither ground or electric can hit opposing grass types. Of all the Paradox Pokemon, Sandy Shocks is one of the most shallow move pools as well. So to summarize, it's not a bad Pokemon by any means, but it doesn't have any one real strength to allow it to really shine. And it kind of just ends up being a slightly average Pokemon across the board, which means that it actually ends up being a little bit below average. Now let's hop over from the world of Pokemon to the realm of Teleria, home to today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Did you know you have access to this magical realm literally anywhere you go? All you gotta do is download it on your phone or PC and voila, portal to Teleria set. Better yet, it's completely free. Raid is something for everyone, whether you love lore, action, mastering new skills, working with a team, or defeating everyone in tournaments. If you're like me, you're into all these things. Raid has nearly 700 champions to explore, endless action, arenas to conquer, and a huge community made up of over 80 million players around the world. The fun truly never ends. Raid has even prepared something special for all new players this Christmas. Get ready to celebrate the 12 days of Raid. Download Raid Shadow Legends from the links below. Copy your player ID from in-game and then go to 12daysofraid.plarium.com. Enter your player ID and then set out on a fun festive adventure that lasts 12 days, running from December 19th to January 10th. Each day, experience a new chapter of this wintry story and play a new mini game for a chance to win some amazing in-game and real life prizes including holiday-themed raid champions and even Amazon gift cards worth up to $1,000. Existing raid players don't think we're leaving you out. Head to 12daysofraid.plarium.com where you can find a special holiday promo code that everyone can use for a small festive gift. Raid is also adding a new champion based off Ronda Rousey. To celebrate Ronda's arrival in Raid, use the special promo code RAIDRONDA to get a bunch of helpful stuff perfect for leveling your Ronda up so she's at the top of her game. New players can also use my link or scan the QR code right here and get a free starter pack with this cool in-game loot. You will find your rewards here in your inbox for the next 30 days only. Don't miss out. Now back to the video. Coming in at number 13 is Slitherwing, the ancient form of Volcarona. It has a great attack stat and really good defenses. Its move pool is a little bit better than Sandy Shocks, especially because it has access to Flare Blitz, which is a really powerful attack. Flare Blitz is especially good because not only is it just a good attack on its own, but it also gets stronger in the harsh sunlight, as is true of Slitherwing as a whole because of Protosynthesis. The last positive that I can say about Slitherwing is that it actually has a number of really useful resistances. Fighting, Ground, Grass, and Dark are all really good types to resist. That's kind of where the good news ends. The rest of it is uh, not great. Defensively, not only is it weak to popular offensive types Fire and Fairy as well as Psychic, it also has a four times weakness to Flying. Bug and Fighting, Slitherwing's two stab attacks, are resisted by Flying, Ghost, Poison, and Fairy. Having four individual types that resist both of your stab moves is a really big problem. Now, Slitherwing does get some tools to remedy this, namely Flare Blitz, which is why I mentioned it earlier, but that isn't the end of its problem. When I was talking about Slitherwing's good stats earlier, there was one that I neglected to mention, and that's its speed. Basically, 81 is a lot slower than you'd like for a Pokemon that wants to be offensive. It's also not slow enough that you could really justify using it in Trick Room. So you kind of get stuck in this awkward middle speed tier, which is especially bad when you're weak to not only common types, but you also have a four times weakness to a type. I think if you plan on using Slitherwing, you should plan on terrestrializing it into fire most of the time. This will improve both its defenses and its offenses, but it isn't enough to make it higher on this list because having a Pokemon that kind of needs to terrestrialize can be a liability. Coming in at number 12 is our third ancient paradox Pokemon, Screamtail. Screamtail is Jigglypuff's ancient form, and it's a bit strange. It's a psychic and fairy type that is really fast and extraordinarily bulky, but doesn't have anywhere near good offenses. In fact, of all the Paradox Pokemon, offensively, it's by far the weakest. I still placed it this high, though, because it has really useful utility. Like many psychic types, it gets access to the attack Trick Room, which is a valuable tool in controlling the speed of the battle. It has other utility moves it can use as well, such as Reflect, Light Screen, Helping Hand, and Perish Song. Perish Song is one of my personal favorite moves, and it's really strong, but a lot of the users are either not very fast or not very bulky, and Screamtail is both. 
It does struggle offensively, especially against Steel-type Pokemon, but defensively, it's only weak to Poison, Ghost, and Steel. Poison isn't even that common of an offensive type, and so for a Pokemon that really wants to play more of a defensive utility role, it's not the worst typing by any means. I can't justify putting it any higher because uh, it does really struggle to do damage and that is kind of important in Pokemon, but I do think that it's a good Pokemon that will definitely see some play. Number 11 is Iron Thorns, Tyranitar's future form. Iron Thorns is one of very few Paradox Pokemon to have actually less total stats than it did uh, before it was Paradoxed. It's a rock and electric type that has really good stats across the board except for its speed stat. One of the main advantages of using Iron Thorns instead of Tyranitar is that it doesn't have a 4 times weakness to fighting. Unfortunately, it trades that 4 times weakness to fighting for a 4 times weakness to ground. This is a lot worse because ground is actually a lot more common as an offensive type compared to fighting. To its credit, Iron Thorns only has 3 additional weaknesses compared to Tyranitar 6. In terms of its resistances, they're okay. Normal and Poison aren't super valuable, but Fire, Electric, and to a lesser extent Flying are all pretty good. Offensively, I don't think that this typing is very good. You're only able to hit five types for super effective damage, and neither Rock nor Electric can hit opposing ground types. Iron Thorns has a decent move pool, just like Tyranitar. Uh, it gets access to a lot of good coverage moves, and also the attack Dragon Dance, which is very useful for setting up. I'm not going to talk about abilities in general a lot, because uh, for the most part, they aren't really that relevant, but on Iron Thorns, actually, in particular, it is, because Sandstream, I would argue, is a much better ability than Quark Drive. Not only does Sandstorm make rock types way bulkier on the special side, um, but also the ability to turn off opposing weather conditions, especially sun, is very relevant when these Paradox Pokemon are legal. Overall, it's not that Iron Thorns is bad, but I think most of the time you'd prefer using Tyranitar. Coming in at number 10 is Iron Jugulus. Most of the other Paradox Pokemon are based on real words, but uh, I googled Jugulus and uh, the only thing that came up was Iron Jugulus, so I don't know what this one is supposed to mean. Maybe he like juggles, I don't know. Anyway, this is a Dark and Flying type Pokemon that is based off of Hydreigon. It has very respectable defenses and a good speed and special attack stat. And in terms of its typing, I actually like Dark and Flying a lot. We actually saw a bunch of Dark and Flying types doing well during Sword and Shield, where at first Galarian Moltres was really good, and then later on Yveltal uh, became also very good. The typing only has four weaknesses, and though many of them are common types, the quantity being low is at least pretty nice. It also has three resistances and two immunities, which uh, is very valuable as well, especially in a format where you can terrestrialize and potentially get even more immunities. Offensively, there's no single type in the game that resists both Dark and Flying. Now, Iron Jugulus, in part, isn't higher because it kind of has Sandy Shock Syndrome. Say that 10 times fast. Sandy Shock, Sandy Shock Syndrome. It does a lot of things, like, well, but it doesn't have any one thing that it really excels in. One of the main weaknesses of special flying types is they're forced to choose between the moves Air Slash or Hurricane as their flying type attack. Now, Air Slash is actually a really weak move, um, but the problem is that Hurricane is really inaccurate unless you're in the rain. Also, Dark Pulse, while solid, just isn't that powerful, and I think a lot of the time, if you wanted to use a Pokemon like Iron Jugulus, you might just prefer Hydreigon. Hydreigon is a bit slower, which is a big deal, but at the same time, it has this incredible burst damage thanks to Draco Meteor that you can't really get with Iron Jugulus. Iron Jugulus does have a great move pool, to be clear. It gets Hydro Pump, Flamethrower, Fire Blast, Earth Power, and importantly, Tailwind, as well as some supporting moves like Snarl. But despite all this, it really feels like it's lacking a big burst option. I like Iron Jugulus, but at the end of the day, I don't think it's that good. Um, but I am really curious to see if anybody proves me wrong and finds a way to use this Pokemon that is different and better than Hydreigon. Our number 9 Pokemon goes to Great Tusk. It's a ground and fighting type Pokemon that has some high highs and also some pretty low lows. On the physical side of the attacking spectrum, it is remarkably bulky. It also has a very high attack stat as well. In terms of its offensive move pool, it actually has a ton going for it. It gets access to incredibly powerful attacks close combat and Headlong Rush, which is a move that was introduced in Pokemon Legends Arceus. Knock Off, Head Smash, Mega Horn, Ice Spinner, Iron Head, Play Rough. There's a lot of good moves that this Pokemon learns. Of course, there are some drawbacks as well. The two biggest ones have to do with its stats. Great Tusk has a shockingly low special defense stat. It's actually so low that it kind of nullifies its really good base HP. It also has the same issue as Slitherwing, where its speed is in a really awkward spot. It's not slow enough that you can really justify using it as a dedicated Trick Room attacker, but it's also not fast enough that you can really get it to a point where it's going to be really fast and outspeeding things. Basically, these two stats, when you consider how bad they are uh, together, makes it extremely vulnerable. Normally, one of the ways you can kind of compensate for a really low defensive stat is to just outspeed your opponent and knock them out first. With Great Tusk, because it's so slow, you don't really have that option. That being said, I'm sure that it could still be good if given the proper speed control, so we'll have to see. In terms of Great Tusk typing, it's okay. It has six weaknesses, many of which are common types. Its resistances are a lot less common overall, resisting poison, bug, dark, and rock. Being immune to electric is really nice though. 
You're able to hit eight types for super effective, but neither type can hit either bug or flying. That being said, both bug and flying are weak to rock, so there is some wiggle room there. Our number eight Pokemon is Iron Treads. This is our only steel type Pokemon out of all the Paradox forms, which I think is funny. Anyway, Iron Treads is a ground and steel type Pokemon that is the future form of Dawnfan. I would say that overall, it's like a more mellow version of Great Tusk. The highs are a little less high, but the lows are also a fair bit less low, which is why I've ranked it higher. Iron Treads is a base 106 speed stat, which is notably faster than Great Tusk. Its special defense is higher than Great Tusk, which is somewhat balanced out by the fact that it has a bit lower base HP. It has a high base physical attack and physical defense stat, though neither are as great as Great Tusk. Talking about its typing offensively, it's also a bit more mellow. Steel is able to hit less types for super effective than fighting, but at the same time, there's no single type that resists both fighting and steel. Iron Treads has four weaknesses, seven resistances, one four times resistance, and two immunities. I would say in terms of move pool, it's kind of the one area where it definitely falls a little short compared to Great Tusk. It still has some good coverage moves, but overall, it just feels a lot less impressive. Hey, it's me well, from the future. I'm wearing a different shirt that's how you know I'm a different guy. Listen, we've been uh, working really hard on these videos. We used to post a video every two weeks. Now we're posting one every two days. Please consider subscribing. I would really appreciate it. We have a whole team of people working on these videos and the better the channel does, the more big projects I'm able to do and the more people I'm able to bring on to help do these big projects. So thank you for watching. Thanks for the support. Please subscribe, please. Coming in just above the halfway point, we have Iron Valiant. This is our first Paradox Pokemon that feels very much like it was geared completely towards offense. It's the fastest Paradox Pokemon we've talked about thus far, and both its attack and its special attack are very high. Fairy and Fighting are a really decent offensive pairing. Though neither type can hit poison types for even neutral damage, Fighting excels at hitting things for super effective, and Fairy excels at hitting things for neutral. It helps that the most popular answer to Fairy type attacks is Steel, which is weak to Fighting. You do have five weaknesses, but they aren't super common as a whole. You get two resistances, two four times resistances, and an immunity, though none of the types are super common. One of the weaknesses of Iron Valiant, and one of the main reasons it's not higher, is it is very frail. It has a very low special defense stat, and its defense and HP stat are only average. Now, one of the big advantages of Iron Valiant is its incredible move pool. It gets good stab attacks, close combat, and spirit break, and it also gets Moonblast, um, which is actually relevant because its special attack stat is very high. Ice Punch, Poison Jab, Night Slash, Leaf Blade, Fire Punch, Knock Off. There's a number of really good moves here, but I get some of the better supporting moves in the game. Uh, Icy Wind, Wide Guard, and Trick Room. One move that is very conspicuously not in its learn set is Play Rough, which is kind of the go-to standard fairy type attack, so that may hold it back a little bit. Overall, it's a good Pokemon that may be a bit difficult to use thanks to its low defenses, but I'm sure some players will make it work. Number six is Iron Moth, the future form of Volcarona. This is a fire and poison type that is very scary if you let it get out of hand. Iron Moth has a very good special attack, special defense, and speed stat. Its HP is fine, but its physical defense is rather low. It has a major weakness in that it is four times weak to ground uh, and also weak to rock, water, and psychic. But it does have five resistances and three four times resistances, uh, including one to fairy, which is a really big deal. Offensively, fire and poison is pretty decent, being able to hit both steel and fairy type Pokemon, though neither one can hit rock. One of the main reasons that Iron Moth isn't higher is because unlike Volcarona, it does not learn Quiver Dance. Quiver Dance is one of the main things that Volcarona does, making itself faster, stronger, and bulkier, and its absence is definitely felt here. That being said, Iron Moth is a very good user of terrestrialization, especially Terra Grass. It resists both ground and water and hits them back for super effective damage, as well as hitting rock for super effective damage, which again, neither fire or poison can touch. Honestly, the only reason Iron Moth isn't higher on my list is because, well, the other Paradox Pokemon are really good to be fair, and also its move pool is uh, a bit limited, but I definitely think that it has a ton of potential. Okay, we're into the top five now. Our number five slot goes to Iron Hands. Paradox Hariyama has very, very good stats. I always harp a lot in the speed stat because moving before your opponent is really valuable, uh, and you might be surprised to hear me say that it has great stats given its speed stat is very low. But the thing is, a low speed stat is okay on the right Pokemon because uh, it allows them to actually function in Trick Room. A lot of the Pokemon we've talked about so far, I've mentioned that they've been in the, kind of this awkward middle stage when it comes to speed, and uh, Iron Hands doesn't have that problem. It's slow, and that means that although, yeah, it's not going to be able to outspeed things, Outside of Trick Room, it can be very valuable inside of it. And since all Paradox Pokemon or most Paradox Pokemon have the same base stat total, the points that are not wasted in speed and are also not wasted in its terrible special attack stat go elsewhere, which is very valuable. Iron Hands is a pretty low special defense stat, but it's able to compensate for that with a truly massive HP stat. On top of that, it has a good physical defense stat and a great attack stat. 
Its fighting electric type typing is good both offensively and defensively. It only has three weaknesses to fighting, psychic, and fairy. On top of that, it has five resistances, which in my opinion is really good. Fighting and Electric are able to hit seven types for super effective damage, and there's no single one type that resists both Fighting and Electric. Now, its move pool isn't the deepest one that we've seen, but it does have a lot of really valuable moves. Fake Out is an incredible tool in general, but it also is especially good on Trick Room teams and on slow Pokemon. Of course, it has good stab attacks like Close Combat and Wild Charge, but it also gets good coverage moves. Play Rough, Earthquake, Iron Head, and Ice Punch are all very good coverage moves depending on what you need your Iron Hands to do. I think of the top tiers, Iron Hands is a little difficult to use because it is so slow, but I'm sure that it has enormous potential. Our number four slot goes to a form of a Pokemon that I never thought would ever be good, Iron Bundle. When I first saw it, I definitely thought that it wasn't that great, but after seeing it in action, I definitely think that it's actually a lot better than I initially thought. Its HP stat is super low, and to compensate for this, its special defense stat is also really bad. Its physical defense stat is good, but it doesn't even matter that much because its HP stat is just so bad. The thing is, Iron Bundle is the fastest Paradox Pokemon, and it has a very respectable special attack stat. I shouldn't say that, it has a good special attack stat. Yeah, it's base 124, it, it has a good special attack stat, I apologize, it's good. Basically, the combination of its typing, the speed, and the special attack allow it to fill a very specific role. Iron Bundle is able to walk the line between a utility Pokemon and an offensive Pokemon. If your opponent is weak to ice or water, you can use it to deal big damage to them, but that's not your only option. Iron Bundle gets access to the move Icy Wind, which is a very valuable tool in controlling the speed of the battle. It can also use moves like Chilling Water and Taunt and even U-Turn and Helping Hand to even further support its team. The fact that it's an Ice-type can help it further stay alive to support its team. Um, if Snow is ever up, obviously it gets bulkier, and it also is an Aurora Veil vale user, and a very fast Aurora Veil vale user at that. It's a really flexible Paradox Pokemon because it just is always so useful to have fast Icy Wind support, and uh, it can also do damage in a lot of cases as well. The number three slot goes to Brute Bonnet, the ancient form of Amoongus. This Grass and Dark type is really interesting. It has more weaknesses than Amoongus, including a four times weakness to Bug, but it also gets more resistances and an immunity. Now, many of you probably know that Amoongus is most known for its role as a supporting Pokemon, so having more weaknesses and more resistances might sound like a double-edged sword. But here's the thing about Brute Bonnet. It's an offensive Pokemon, or at least it can be. It does still get access to the very powerful move Spore and Rage Powder, but it also has an actual good attack stat for once. One of the weaknesses of Amoongus is sometimes it can just get stuck on the field doing nothing or just clicking Spore. With Brute Bonnet, you're actually able to do damage because its attack stat is actually pretty high. It also gets access to the move Sucker Punch, which is very valuable, especially when you consider that it is still slow, though it's not as slow as Amoongus. For some reason, they also gave it access to um, Close Combat, which is a little scary because Steel types are often used to check like Grass and Dark type Pokemon, so uh, yeah. <laughs> I think the trade-off between Brute Bonnet and Amoongus is really interesting, with one of the biggest factors being the ability. Brute Bonnet's a little faster, but it's way stronger, and overall, I would say that its move pool is kind of just better. It gets all the good moves that Amoongus gets, and then some more. The difference, though, is that Amoongus has access to Regenerator, which is a really valuable way to heal itself back up after taking damage. Thanks to Protosynthesis, Brute Bonnet doesn't have a way of doing that. I think it'll be really interesting to see whether players value the pure support value out of Amoongus or the hybrid support and offense value out of Brute Bonnet. Our number two slot goes to Roaring Moon. This ancient form of Salamence is funny because it's actually the same type as Hydreigon, Dragon, and Dark. Let's just get this out of the way first. This thing has stupidly good stats. It's very fast, very strong, and very respectably bulky. The offensive stat being this high is a really big deal because Dragon and Dark are really good at hitting things for neutral damage. Basically, Fairy is the only type that resists both Dragon and Dark. On the one hand, it has a four times weakness to Fairy as well as a couple other common weaknesses. On the other hand, you get six very useful resistances plus an immunity. And thanks to Terrestrialization, you can turn off your weaknesses with a bit more ease. It's part of the reason Hydreigon is so good right now. Let's talk about its move pool. Sure, it gets Dragon Claw and Crunch, which is kind of par for the course for any Dragon and Dark physical type attacker, but there's more. Not only does it have good coverage moves, which I'll talk about in a second, but it also gets access to Jawlock and Scale Shot, which are two uh, very powerful alternative stab attacks. For coverage, it also gets Earthquake, Stone Edge, and Iron Head, to name a few. But it also gets really good moves that don't do damage. Tailwind is a great move to support your team and make sure that your Pokemon are moving before your opponent, but it can also use Dragon Dance to start setting up and try to sweep through the opponent's team. It's also one of the scarier Pokemon when it comes to Protosynthesis because it has such high attack and speed stats. This is absolutely one of the best Paradox Pokemon, and it will definitely be winning tournaments. Okay, last but certainly not least, you probably know what it is, it's Fluttermane. 
The number one slot somehow goes to a Pokemon that is the ancient form of Mischievous. Its weaknesses are its HP and defense stat are actually really low, uh, but its strengths are that its special attack, special defense, and speed stat are, yeah. It's a fairy and ghost type, which leaves it with only weaknesses to ghost and steel. In exchange, it has no normal resistances, one four times resistance to bug, and three immunities. Offensively though, is where it really shines. It's able to hit five types for super effective damage, but there's no single type in the game that resists both ghost and fairy. When you couple the fact that basically nothing can resist both its stabs and the fact that it has a very good special attack stat, you might be able to see why this thing is a problem. Remember how they didn't give Iron Valiant a uh, player off because they were worried about it maybe being too strong? Well, they did give Fluttermane Moonblast, so they weren't worried about that here. On top of Moonblast, it also gets Shadow Ball, Hex, and Dazzling Gleam, which are all useful stab moves. In terms of its coverage, it has a number of good options. Mystical Fire will probably be one of the more popular ones because it both has utility and hit steel type Pokemon, but there are others as well. Icy Wind, Thunderbolt, Dark Pulse, Power Gem, Psy Shock, there's a lot of good options. We talked earlier with Screamtail about how good a fast Parish Song user is, and uh, Fluttermane also gets Parish Song. It also gets Trick Room and Taunt, which are very valuable moves overall. Basically, this is probably going to be the most used Paradox Pokemon the instant it becomes legal, and uh, it's not really that surprising. Anyway, that's how I ranked all the Paradox Pokemon. Let me know what you think, let me know which one's your favorite, and let me know if you disagree with any of my placements. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.